Hi folks, welcome to the Decoy Shed. We're at the Midwest Decoy Collector Association and today we're going to be talking with Phil Jones who is a dealer in waterfowl decoys. Phil, thanks for taking the time to meet with us today. My pleasure, Jen. One of the great uh, resources that decoy collectors, whether they be beginning, novice, or experienced, is to have uh, a good rapport with a reputable dealer. So if uh, one of our viewers out there wanted to start establishing a relationship with the dealer, how would you suggest they go about that? I think probably uh, the best way I would suggest is to come to a show like this, because there's no substitute for actually meeting people face to face and seeing decoys, being able to discuss the decoys that are right there in front of you. Uh, you know, the internet gives us great opportunity to see things online without having to actually go or travel to a show, but it, it doesn't it doesn't replace the, the, the impressions you get from the decoys and, and the uh, true feel of them that you get by picking them up and looking at them, touching them, feeling them, holding them. Uh, and the dealer that you're talking to, uh, you're much better able to assess his character and credibility, I guess, by talking to him face to face. Email, telephone is fine once you've sort of established a relationship. But I'd say the first and foremost is to, that I would recommend would be to come to a show and uh, you know, really start to talk to, to a dealer and get acquainted with him that way. Now, most dealers have a good, uh, broad, general knowledge of decoys, but do they also specialize in either style or carvers? Many, many do. Many specialize uh, by regions. Um, and sometimes because they happen to be from that particular region, they gain their expertise in that particular area and they're more familiar with the decoys from that area. Others, others differentiate uh, by price. Some of them deal only in the higher price decoys, others in a broader range of prices. Um, others between, some, some deal primarily in vintage decoys, the older decoys. Um, while others, you know, deal more in contemporary. Myself, I try to get a little bit of price variability and also a range of uh, decoys of all kinds from all regions. And I try to specialize in decoys for the beginner to intermediate. I leave the high, high dollar decoys to other guys. That's, that's my particular area that I deal in. So, uh, <clears throat> if a, a collector is uh, trying to make a decision between uh, uh, on a dealer <clears throat> to advise them, which would you think would be more important? A particular expertise in the style or carver, or just that whether your, your relationship clicks, whether you click with that particular individual? Well, the relationship has to click. But I think the most important thing is that a collector should try to identify the particular kinds of decoys that he that he's going to like, and that's a matter of personal enjoyment. You can't try to, you shouldn't try to collect something someone else collects, because that may not be what you you really like. Decoy collecting, I think, is primarily uh, for me. It's an enjoyment. I enjoy the decoys. They just, I just love them, and, and they have a strong appeal to me. So I think, as a beginner collector, to a beginner collector, I would recommend first and foremost buy what you like, because you're gonna, you're gonna live with it, and that's, right. and you're gonna enjoy it more if you really like it. So after that, once you, once you identify the kind of decoy you like, whether it's by region or whether it's vintage versus contemporary, then you can find a dealer who specializes in that area just by looking at what's on his table. And then you want to deal with one that you feel the rapport with. Right. So if uh, a collector calls you and they've got a general region in, in mind, uh, maybe they've seen a particular carver that they like, they might give you uh, some uh, examples of the type of birds that they've seen. And you might be able to suggest to them not only uh, that particular carver's birds, but other carvers that carve in a similar style. Exactly. There's, there's. Uh, 
a wide range of decoys that you can that you can collect. You can collect by region, you can collect by harbor, you can collect by species, uh, you can collect say factory versus hand carved, and there are many dealers that will specialize in all of those. And uh, you know, someone like myself who's been around the shows for 25 years, if I don't have a particular expertise that, that a new collector is looking for. You know, I'd certainly be in a position to recommend someone that they, they would deal with in that area. So with your contacts and uh, other dealers that you know, then you might, uh, you could either reach out to another dealer and see if they had a particular type of bird or carver, uh, or you might even refer someone to another dealer. Uh, That's you... one of the nice things about this hobby, I think, is that it's small enough that you can get to know just about everyone in it after a few years. And you learn, uh, guy, I, you know, I've got friends in every, just about every state because of collecting. And, uh, you know, that's, that's an important part, the networking and the enjoyment you get just from socializing with other people with similar interests to yours. Our, Bill, great information. Uh, let's talk now about hunting classics, which is your business and the, the type of birds which we have examples of in front of us of your current inventory, but uh, you turn over inventory uh, fairly regularly, is that right? Correct, yeah. So if someone was uh, trying to go out on the online and see what you happen to have available at that time, how would they find you? Well, my, you can Google Phil Jones decoys for one thing and, and that'll come up huntingclassics.com uh, or the web address is www.huntingclassics.com I usually have anywhere from 40 to 70 decoys on the website of just about all price ranges and from all regions uh, some some more suitable to intermediate range collectors but certainly uh, a good many that would be for beginners when I started my website about eight years ago for SoCo, I think there were maybe five or six. Now there's probably around 20, and uh, it seems like new ones are being added as, as other dealers and veteran collectors uh, sort of establish websites of their own. You know, we used to just be able to enjoy this hobby several times a year when there were shows, but now with the internet and websites, we're able to do that all year round. And uh, there are links on my site to the other uh, uh, dealer sites and uh, contact information, how to get a hold of me is on there, my telephone number, and uh, welcome any phone calls, any inquiries. Great. I'm more than happy to respond to. Super. Now, in addition to being a decoy collector and a dealer, you're quite the accomplished artist too, aren't you? <laughs> Well, I started uh, watercolor painting uh, about three years ago when I retired. Uh, I retired from Smith Barney as a stockbroker and uh, had not done much painting for probably uh, 35 or 40 years since high school, really. And uh, just wanted to get back in the hobby and because of my love of decoys and collecting decoys, the natural thing to paint was classic old decoys. So I don't, I don't know how accomplished I am at this point, but I do get a lot of fun from it and uh, have, uh, have gotten some compliments on it, which makes me very pleased. Right. And folks, you know, go out to Phil's site. You can see uh, examples of Phil's work out there. They're terrific. Uh, I think you're gonna enjoy them. Phil, thanks so much for visiting with us today. My pleasure, Tim. And folks, we'll see you in the decoy shed.